Will the meeting please come to order? Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by seminarian and chaplain Mary Murphy from Vanderbilt Hospital, the guest of Council Member John Cooper. Welcome the stranger, for you were once strangers in Egypt. In the Torah, the children of Israel were told 36 times to welcome the stranger in their midst, as they were once themselves strangers in Egypt, centuries of slavery. Jesus tells us to love God and to love our neighbor. He illustrates that love, that, that love we should show for strangers with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Tonight, Lord, as this council gathers to go about this work. Open their eyes that they might see your face in the people of this city. For every person is created in your image, whether Christian, Jewish, or Muslim, whether male, female, or trans, whether resident or immigrant, whether housed or unhoused. Lord, open the ears of this council so that they might hear your voice and every human who cries for hope, for freedom, for opportunity, for justice, and for mercy. Lord, open the hearts and minds of this council that they might prudently discern how to care for the people of the city, remembering that you call us to love our neighbors and to care for the stranger, the widow, and the orphan. Lord God, we give you thanks for this council and for their public service. Bless them and give them moral courage as they go about their work. And Lord, bless all the people of this city with government leaders who take stands for justice, equality, love, and peace. In your name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record uh, the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of June 20th, 2017? Without objection, those uh, minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, sir, there are no messages from the mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. No, sir, no messages from the mayor. We now move to elections and confirmations. Councilman Schulman, is there a report from the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council, and uh, to our acting clerk or uh, and deputy clerk, we're very glad you're here. Um, we have a very short report. I know the vice mayor will be very happy with that. Uh, we only had um, <clears throat> we only had one appointment that we had to approve: uh, the Employment Benefit Board reappointment of Mr. Tom Curtis and Gabriella Lira for um, the Standards and Appeals Board. Property Standards and Appeals Board were both deferred one meeting. So back to Mr. Spragans. This is for the Beer Permit Board. Uh, appointment of Mr. John Spragans for a term expiring October 31st, 2019. Mr. Spragans be filling the unexpired term of Ms. Ann Sumter Arney 
Uh, we questioned Mr. Spragans, uh, who's a lawyer in town. He had a copy of the beer laws with him. Uh, that was good. Uh, after a lot of discussion, we approved him. Um, but I will tell you this, um, we approved him eight for, one against. Now, there's only eight people on the committee. Um, the one vote against him was from Atticus Elrod, who is the young son of Councilman Elrod, um, and he voted no on every one of our resolutions, and he voted no on Mr. Spragans. But uh, the actual vote was eight four zero against, and I would move for approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. John Spragans to the Beer Permit Board. It's been properly seconded. Before we vote, I will tell you that I conducted Mr. Spragans' uh, wedding to his wife, who I see sitting in the audience. And before we vote, this is your opportunity to object. <laughs> no objections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Spragans, um, normally we have more than one person to announce, but tonight we would like to recognize you. Um, and so if you'd please stand. Um, on behalf of the entire Metro Council and the uh, citizens of Davidson County, we would like to thank you for your willingness to serve and impose upon your wife. And uh, um, so thank you very much. It was a surprise wedding. It, no one knew except like, I don't know, 15 or 20 people that they were getting married. It was a big um, Kentucky Derby party, as most people thought. So the best wedding I've been, ever been to except mine. <laughs> that brings us to resolutions on public hearing. RS 2017-767, Councilman Withers, exempts uh, different class LLC, the Rosemary and Beauty Queen, located at 1102 Forest Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Uh, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing, please. Let's get, let's get our sorry, committee report first. Councilman Pardew. Public safety vote is 6 0 to pass. Thank you, Councilman. Would all those in favor of RS 2017 767 please raise your hands? Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? De declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on public hearing. Bill 2016-488, Councilman Sledge, uh, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, changes 0.14 acres from IWD to MULA zoning for property located at 1267 2nd Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2016-488 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Is, I'm sorry, was there someone opposed? Is there? Okay, all in favor, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-489, Councilman Sledge, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, changes 0.34 acres from IWD to MULA zoning for properties located at 1277 and 1285 Second Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2016-489, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, if those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017. Uh, 700. Councilman Scott Davis. Um, Approve with dis conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.49 acres from R6 to SB zoning for property located at 1021 Elvira Avenue to permit up to six residential units. I don't see Councilman Scott Davis. This is to be deferred regardless to the next public hearing. Um, is there a motion to defer? 
Motion to defer is properly seconded to the, pub, to the August public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-701, Council Lady Karen Johnson, disapproved of the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Applies an urban design overlay district for 11.25 acres for various properties located along Moss Spring, Spring Drive and Blue Water Trace. Uh, Councilman Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor? I'm sorry, this is a, dis a disapproved bill, Council Lady, so we'll see the slides first. Okay. All right. There you go. I'm sorry. There you go. This application is a request to establish an urban design overlay district. Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. The current zoning of the property is RS10, residential single family, and AR2A, agricultural residential. And the property is located south of Moss Spring Drive and east of Blue Water Drive. There is currently a portion of the property is within an existing contextual overlay. The land use policy for the area is T3, suburban neighborhood maintenance. Uh, in regards to an urban design overlay, this is a tool that applies design standards over a certain area, typically a corridor or neighborhood consisting of numerous properties. The base zoning remains, but the UDO standards do have the force and effect of the base zoning. It protects existing character or creates a new character. The stated purpose of this intended proposed UDO was to preserve the integrity and footprint of the existing surrounding development pattern and ensure that future growth respects and is consistent with the wider area. Uh, staff found that many of the proposed UDO standards are inconsistent with this purpose. There are proposed development standards within the UDO that specify standards for height, accessory structures, garages, and access and driveways. There are also standards in regards to building materials, both pro prohib prohibited and permitted, as well as glazing. In regards to the, uh, the proposed UDO, the Planning Commission found that the UDO is inconsistent with the stated purpose of the UDO and the policy. In regards to the building materials, the UDO would require primary exterior building materials of brick or stone. There are many houses within the existing area where siding is the primary exterior material. Additionally, the UDO proposes maximum width on driveway of 12 feet. There are many existing driveways within the area that are wider than 12 feet. And there are garages that um, do not meet the UDO standard of requiring a detached or side access as there are many front loaded garages within the area. Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove as the UDO standards would not maintain the existing character and are inconsistent with the purpose of the policy, the neighborhood maintenance policy, as well as the stated purpose of the UDO. Additionally, a UDO is the incorrect tool due to the number and size of the properties included. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to open the public hearing. Okay, would all those in favor of BL 2017-701, please raise your hands. Councilor Johnson, uh, you're standing right in front of two people. Are they raising their hands? Okay, thank you. All, so all those in favor, all those opposed. Okay, would those in favor please come on up to the podium? Uh, you'll each be given three minutes to speak and uh, please state your name and address first. So um, those in the back who raised your hands, if you'd like to speak, please come on up right now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Moss. I live at 2993 Brantley Drive. Uh, my street faces Moss Spring and Moss Landing. I personally walked around, counted those two streets. I think it was a total of 43 houses only four had front-facing garages, and that borders that cul-de-sac. So whatever number, wherever they figured out that it was houses had front-facing garages, they didn't count the streets that were bordering this one. Okay, I recently attended a community meeting about the new, about the new development that's being built. I attended the meeting optimistic that we would finally be able to communicate with the developer and see the house designs that he wanted to build, because previous community meetings, he was a no-show. Instead of seeing a developer eager to show us his homes, instead of someone who was proud of their work, we saw someone who did not want to show us any images or renderings of the house's plan for the development. Uh, the community support for the UDO, am I saying that right? Um, 
at that meeting afterwards was overwhelming. The standards that we are asking for are pretty basic and, cons and consistent with the neighborhood. I disagree with whoever said that wasn't. Um, I am not sure why any developer would want to reject this and fight this. Uh, the, it is also consistent with the another UDO that's submitted in other areas. Why can't we get treated the same way? If other neighbors show fear about supporting this, it is due to the encounter we had with Mark Marshall at that meeting. In short, he made it clear that large growth trees might not be spared, nor could water retention ponds and drainage be done correctly unless we submitted to his will. Holding our neighborhood's well-being and aesthetics hostage until he got what he wanted from us. The veiled threat um, might have been successful frightening some of the neighbors, but it doesn't frighten me. I'm standing up. I'm not going to be blackmailed. Um, this will be a valuable tool to keep our neighborhood beautiful, retain its market value and character. I am imploring you all to put yourselves in our shoes. Wouldn't you want this in your neighborhood? Antioch is rising. Please keep, help keep us, Antioch, on the right track during this wonderful time of growth that is happening in Middle Tennessee. The best way to predict future behavior is past behavior. Past developments have not had good results in our neighborhood. Hold developers to standards that result in neighborhoods that look beautiful 10 to 20 years down the road. Please support this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Judy Goodrich. I live at 3212 Blue Water Trace, and I am in support of the UDO. I'm looking at the pictures you posted, and that those pictures were of my street. There, it's not the street that the development's coming off of. The street the development is facing is brick, side garages, back garages. As far as my street and the pictures you had, he's already put his houses there. There's nothing to discuss anymore. We're asking for the UDO so we don't have a neighborhood that's brick facing one way and one that looks like vertical trailer homes. The UDO is not extensive. It's fairly reasonable, and it does fit. I know you guys don't know what these neighborhoods look like. But what we're asking for is in keeping with everything else around there. There's nothing in there that isn't already there. You would have to look at it. Like I said, the pictures and the slides you looked at are not of the streets we're talking about. The AR2, he can build two houses on one side, two or four on the other. He's already started construction. We're not talking about that. The UDO is for the 17 or how many other houses he gets to blend with the neighborhood. It's too stark. It's too different what he's putting up. It doesn't, it looks odd. And the building materials in our neighborhood you're saying, yes, there's siding. My siding is cedar and stone. Everything on my block is brick, cedar, stone. I don't see aluminum siding, maybe on some of the gables, but that's it. I wish your slides would have included pictures of the streets so you knew what we were talking about. But please support this. Other neighborhoods have gotten this with the same... I don't understand why UDOs are granted for other neighborhoods. Our neighborhood, we have to fight for everything we get. If you only could see it, look it up online. See what the building materials, what we're talking about. The disapproval is not the facts of what is existing. It's just not. Like I said, my house. But on Karen's block, the Moss Wing, everything is brick. It's all brick. The garages are on the side or in the back. I think there's four houses out of 30 or 37 that actually have a front-loading garage. On my street, I don't mind. We all are. But like I said, it's over. He's already built. We can't do anything there. All we're asking for is for this neighborhood to blend with everything else. So it ages well, like our houses have aged well. It's not falling apart in 10 years and blighting. I've lived in my house for 13 years. I really don't want to leave it. I like it. 
My neighborhood has block parties. We all get along, but we're all beat because we you. don't seem to get any respect in our area. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Cynthia Scott. I live at 2711 Priest Lake Drive. I am not adjacent to this neighborhood or, well, to the streets. However, I have many friends who have lived in that area all my life. I have lived in this area for, uh, do I dare say, uh, over 40 years. And my parents bought in this neighborhood with the the houses that were there are the houses that will be consistent with the UDO that Karen Johnson is proposing. If those houses 40 something, 50 something years ago were consistent, then I think we should stick with the houses that are still there from 40 or 50 years ago, instead of go going with houses that have lesser construction you will see siding in our area. However, what you must realize, what is under the siding? Our house has, has vinyl siding or aluminum siding, but what's under that is wood, good, solid wood. It was put on, the siding was put on there to protect the wood, not as a means of just, this is the decoration over substandard building material, and I'm not saying that he's going to use substandard building material, but someone in the future may if we don't protect our area with the UDO that Karen Johnson has uh, proposed. So I implore you as a resident, as a lifelong resident of this neighborhood, to please vote for this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing no one else in favor with those in opposition, please come forward. Members of the council, my name is Joey Hargis. I'm an attorney for the property owner, Mark Marshall, Marsh Springs Development. Uh, I do come to you tonight and ask uh, for you all to vote disapproval of this request. Uh, as planning staff stated and the commissioners, uh, this UDO is not the proper tool to apply these regulations to this development. Um, the, the developer, one of the, one of the prior speakers talked about the developer has been a no-show. To my knowledge, the invitation that was received at the last community meeting was the first that he had received, to my knowledge. We believe that there can be an overall solution to this development that's there. Uh, Mr. Marshall owns two properties, which you saw in there. One currently is owned AR2A and one currently is owned RS10. Uh, and we believe there's, there's more of a global comprehensive solution that can come out of this with uh, terms of the UDO that are negotiated and not dictated. Uh, I think compromise and discussion is always important. It's always important for folks to talk, but the uh, development and the, and the rules stated here were not negotiated with the developer. Uh, so I, I would ask that you all vote to disapprove. Uh, I, again, I, I talked to Council A, let's, let's come up with a bill that, that can work for everyone, but we do not believe that this bill is that bill and ask for you to deny this bill tonight and on third reading. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Warner. I live at the corner of uh, Calais and Owendale, which is around the corner. I <clears throat> uh, oppose this bill. Uh, the Planning Commission has clearly disapproved the bill and are against it. Uh, we should come up with a global of, or comprehensive plan of design guidelines that can be negotiated between the council, developer, and the homeowners. Again, I oppose this bill. Thank you. Seeing no one else, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Johnson. I move for approval with a brief explanation. Or yours. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council members, this is a situation where uh, we are not asking of anything different than what we have previously approved for other areas. Um, the fact of the matter of what they are explaining to you about is that this developer has most recently, within the last eight months, purchase three parcels around where the UDO um, is being proposed. 
those parcels, honestly, none of us even knew that those properties were even for sale. There were no for sale signs that went up on those properties. But however, he got to those property owners on the vacant lots, and he has built in our neighborhood homes that are all siding. Um, that in and of itself already is a precedent in terms of what uh, he is going to do within our neighborhood. We've had a couple of community meetings with him in regards to those homes. One of the things that came out of the community meeting was that the neighbors wanted to have a contextual overlay, which we did pass, and a UDO to establish design standards. All of our homes are brick, stone, and masonry. And our garages, they face the back and the side of our homes. My home is all brick and wood, and the garage is on the back. The community meeting that we just recently held, we extended um, numerous invitations to this developer, and he was busy traveling in Europe. And we accommodate him and, and ultimately had a community meeting, which he came to, and then he didn't like the response that he got, so he left. We had overwhelming number of people at that community meeting to raise their hand because one of the questions that was asked was, how many homes in this neighborhood have uh, garages on the front and how many have them on the side and the back? The majority of the people in the room said the side and the back, and I would say at most about four or five had them on the front. There are no homes except the ones that he has built within the last three months on those empty parcels that are all siding. We want to protect the character of our community. I ask for your support. I don't think that is anything unreasonable to ask. This particular legislation was developed by our own uh, Brandon Burnett. We trusted his expertise. He has been willing to meet with the community. He's been willing to talk with the developer. There has been a lot of back and forth between the developer and our community. And this is where we are, and we ask for your support. We have gone above and beyond on this issue, and I ask that you help me to protect the community which we all love. With that, I ask for your approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-702, Councilman Scott Davis, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, changes 1.66 acres from RS5 to RM20A zoning for properties located at 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 Lucille Street and Lucille Street, unnumbered west of Elmhurst Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Vice Mayor, um, like the open public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-702, please raise your hands. Those opposed? I didn't see any on either side. Did you, Councilman? No, sir. Seeing none on, on either side, um, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Um, like to close public hearing. Move for approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-703, Councilman Scott Davis. Changes uh, is approved by the plan. Oh, crap. Uh, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 0.82 acres from CS and OR20 to RM20A zoning for property located at 107 and 109 Queen Avenue. Uh, Councilman Davis. Um, we're going to move to defer two me um, one meeting. Two meetings to the August 1st, the first public hearing in August, Vice Mayor. The motion to defer to the August public hearing is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-704, Council Lady Vircher and Karen Johnson. Amen, uh, it's been referred to the Planning Commission, amends the Metro Code pertaining to rope lighting. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for deferral to the August uh, public uh, meeting, public there's, hearing in August. There's a motion to defer to uh, August public hearing. It's properly seconded. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-719, Councilman Scott Davis. Change, uh, disapproved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 0.23 acres from R6 to SB zoning for property located at 2407 Brasher Avenue to permit an accessory detached recording studio in addition to all uses permitted by the R6 zoning district. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. I think we need to do the slides first. This is a request to change the zoning from R6 to SP mixed use for property located on Brasher Avenue. The Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. The existing zoning of the property is R6, which is one and two family residential. The land use policy for the area is T4 urban neighborhood maintenance, which is the residential only policy. The standards for the specific plan are that the uses within this SP would be limited to all uses permitted within by the base zoning R6, and in addition to a detached accessory recording studio. No structural alterations um, shall be allowed for the use, and all parking shall be located on site. Um, in regards to um, home occupation uses, there is a bit of a history uh, with the Council and Planning Commission in reviewing home occupations on a countywide basis. Um, as a bit of history, in 2011, there was a proposal that would have allowed clients for cosmetology and barbershop home occupations that was ultimately withdrawn. Um, in 2011, there was also a um, allowance or a proposal to allow for uh, a maximum number per hour and per day that was withdrawn as well. In 2011, there was another that would have permitted clients and customers to be served on site subject to limits that was disapproved. And in 2012, there was a bill to propose a new home recording studio as a home occupation, which would permit clients on site, and it was ultimately withdrawn. Um, planning Commission recommend recommendation was to disapprove as the proposal was inconsistent with the neighborhood maintenance policy, given that the policy is a residential only policy and allowing for a commercial use within the policy would be inconsistent. A, a bit of history, that was quite an understatement um, for <laughs> Anyone seeking a list of the illustrious sponsors of that previously failed le legislation can contact me later. Uh, all those in favor of Bill 2017-719? I'm sorry. No, I was going to, uh, all those in favor. Anyway. All those in favor of Bill 2017-719, please raise your hands. All those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? <laughs> Declare the public and close. Councilman Davis. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I would not, since I know we've all been busy, you know, because we're going to have a third reading coming up, and I want us all to remember the neighbors that are here in support, because I'm going to need 27 votes. And I want to thank my neighbors for coming out, but I need them back on third reading, especially during our planning committee meetings to remind my fellow council members, because there's lots of meetings in between with the community, of the overwhelming support that we have. This gentleman is a pillar of our community, and we want to help them. And once again, because those neighbors in support, please raise your hands again. Now, we're seeing that. Planning committee staff, Ms. Allen, <laughs> Councilman, address the. Uh, I apologize, the chair, Vice please. Mayor, but um, I like to move for approval. I thank everybody for their time. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 720. Councilman Hager, amend, uh, refer to the Planning Commission. Amends the Metro Code to modify the conditions pertaining to setbacks for construction, demolition, landfills, sanitary landfills, and waste transfer facilities. Councilman Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Since we've passed the Jackson law, this will be preempted, so I move to withdraw. That motion is, that matter is withdrawn. BL 2017-721, Councilman Hager and others, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, amends the Metro Code pertaining to traffic impact studies. Councilman Hager. Um, need committee reports, or do we have one on that? We move. just need a public hearing. All right. But I went for public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-721, please raise your hands. Opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Haker. Move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 
BL 2017 734, Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 3.92 acres from R8 to IWD zoning for property located at 2912 Brick Church Pike. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to open up the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017 734, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. Like to move for an approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-742, Councilman Syracuse, refer to, the, to Public Works, approves uh, plans for a construction and demolition, demolition solid waste processing facility to be located at 511 Cave Road. Councilman Syracuse. Vice Mayor, need to get a committee report first? Um, you, or public hearing first? Let's get our, we'll go ahead and get our, our do you have a committee report, Councilman Elrod? Public Works recommend approval, uh, 10 in favor, zero against. Or nine in favor, excuse me, nine in favor, zero against. All right. You want to move your amendment first or do you want to have a hearing? Oh, let's first? move the amendment first. Okay. It's, it's purely housekeeping. Okay. There's right, a yes. motion to amend, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're now on your bill as amended. You're ready for your public hearing. Let's open public hearing. Thank you. All those in favor of BL 2017-742, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, BL 2017-756, Councilman Scott Davis. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.2 acres from RS5 uh, to R6A zoning for property uh, located at uh, 2510 Trevecca Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor, BL 2017-756, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. I move for approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-757, Councilman Bedney. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Amends 199.7 acres of the Evergreen Hills SP to, for properties located at 13880. Old Hickory Boulevard and Old Hickory Boulevard unnumbered east of Pettus Road to permit 634 residential lots. Councilman Bednang. Yeah, thank you, Vice Mayor. I open, move to open the public hearing, please. Okay, all those in favor of Bill 2017-757, please raise your hands. Those opposed? I can't, uh, do you see any opposed, Councilman Bednang? No, there is nobody opposed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's so proud. Uh, seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bednar. I guess I move to approve. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-758, Council Lady Vircher, referred to the Planning Commission, applies 27.96 acres of a contextual overlay district for various properties located south of Reeves Road. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for withdrawal with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, this contextual overlay, we're going to withdraw it, and we're going to replace it with the UDO in conjunction with um, uh, um, planning with our planner, uh, Brandon, and um, the planning department. Uh, we met with some neighbors with the planning department, and we agreed upon that what we're trying to get with the aesthetics and the design and preserving the neighborhood, the best tool would be to replace the contextual overlay with the UDO, so I'll be bringing that in the upcoming months. Thank you, and I'll move for withdrawal. That bill's withdrawn. BL 2017-759, Councilman Hastings. Approved by the Planning Commission 701. Changes 0.47 acres from R8 to IWD zoning for property located at 2923 Brick Church by Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move to defer this uh, bill until August, uh, the first meeting in August. Motion to defer to the pub August public hearing. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 760. Councilman Scott Davis approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.19 acres from SP to R6A zoning for property located at 609 North 2nd Street. Councilman Scott Davis. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-760, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. I move for approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-761, Councilman O'Connell approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 0.8 acres from R6 to SB zoning for properties located at 400, 402, 404, 406, 408, and 408 B Hume Street and 1603A, 1603B, and 1603C, uh, 4th Avenue North to permit 18 residential units. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017 761 please raise your hands? Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 762, Council Lady Roberts. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes uh, 0.8 acres from R8 to SP zoning. Uh, for properties located at 1015 and 1017 O'Brien Avenue to permit up to nine residential units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-762 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing, okay. All right, I see you. So would those in favor please uh, come to the podium to speak? You have three minutes. State your name and address. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I believe the other person that rose a hand in opposition is actually in support. So I'll speak if you like. Is, is that uh, <laughs> the gentleman here in the yellow shirt is the one who I did, are you in favor or opposed? Yeah. Favor. Declare the public hearing closed. Council uh, A. Roberts. I'd like to move for approval, please. All right. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-763, Councilman Freeman approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.7 acres from R10 to CS zoning for property located at 981 Murphy's Pike. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. But all those in favor of BL 2017-763, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, uh, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-764. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg, Council Lady Wiener. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 4.07 acres from R15 to SP zoning for property located at 730 Old Hickory Boulevard to permit up to 49 residential units. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move the pub open the public hearing, please. All those in favor, BL 2017 764, please raise your hands. Those opposed? I'm going to make sure you're opposed, sir, because we got it wrong last time. Okay. All those in favor, please come forward to speak. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, members of the planning of the council. <clears throat> I'm Roy Dale, and I'm representing this, the applicant on this project. Uh, this has uh, been recommended to approval by the Planning Commission. Uh, we've worked very well with staff. They've been very helpful. This plan has been modified and changed uh, several times in order to create a very nice uh, road frontage and street frontage. There's a lot of open space. Um, we've had several community meetings. Um, I'm pretty sure the uh, council member is solidly behind this, and uh, I would appreciate your endorsement tonight. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Those opposed, please come forward. State your name and address. You have three minutes. My name is Greg Bolt. I live at 720 Old Hickory Boulevard, right next door to this new project. My concerns with this is that there is a creek 
that runs through my property into that property. And when we had that big flood years back, that creek was running 20 feet out of the banks, had to be five foot deep. And I want to know how they're going to contain that if we should ever have that happen again. The buildings that they'll put in will get flooded, plus it'll probably flood me out if they don't take care of that correctly. That is my one and main concern about what they're doing. Nobody's talked to me about that. The other thing I would like is to have a privacy fence put up on my north side of my property that would run along where they're building so I could have, you know, have some privacy. I don't really want this there, but if they're going to do it, I would appreciate a fence. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Rosenberg, are you handling this for Council Lady Wiener? I am. I'd ask you to step out and get that gentleman's name and address so that she can contact him after the meeting. Sure. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Rosenberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Council Lady Wiener has committed to work with any concerned neighbors in advance of third reading, so I'd like to move approval, please. A motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 765, Council Lady Karen Johnson, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 1.23 acres from AR 2A to SP zoning for property located at 3413 Old Anderson Road to permit nine residential units. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, would all those in favor of Bill 2017 765 uh, please raise your hands? Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, would those in favor like to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. Thank you. This is an example of a developer that works with the community. We had several community meetings. <clears throat> Thank you, developer, for showing up. <clears throat> and um, they brought renderings of their proposed homes, so there was no guessing from any of the neighbors who came to the meeting. Therefore, you don't see what you just saw previously. So I just wanted to point that out, that our community is very pro-development, but we want quality development. And with that, I ask for your approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> BL 2017-766, Councilman Scott Davis, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.16 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1314 Joseph Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-766 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Move for approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-767, Council Lady Roberts, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 1.25 acres from R6 and R8 to SB zoning for properties located at 6120. 6122 and 6124 Robertson Avenue and Robertson Avenue unnumbered east of Waco Drive to permit up to 15 multifamily dwelling units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open up the public hearing. All those in favor of Bill 2017-767, uh, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing uh, none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Roberts. I'd like to move for approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-768, Councilman Syracuse and Roten. Changes 87.91 acres from RS15 to SP zoning for property located at 3605 and 36, uh, I'm sorry, and 3739 Hoggett Ford Road and Hoggett Ford Road unnumbered east of Brandau Road to permit up to 289 residential dwelling units. Uh, Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of Bill 2017 768 please raise your hands. Those opposed? 
Okay, those in favor, please come to the floor to the podium to speak. Vice Mayor, members of the council, my name is Tom White. I represent the applicant, live in address at 315 Dedrick Street. I want to start off by thanking Councilman Roten for his untold time on this bill. There were any number of meetings, tremendous number of calls and contacts that were made in the neighborhood, and I appreciated that support throughout, as did my client, who's Beezer, one of the better known, recognized builders in the country and certainly in Nashville. I want to thank Councilman Syracuse, who's picked this up in uh, Councilman Roten's absence tonight. Uh, this is a bill that was unanimously approved by the Planning Commission. It's consistent uh, with the general plan. Uh, and as we came through the process, we built unanimity throughout. I think you saw by the presence here tonight that the overwhelming number of people that live in the area and are close by are supportive. We'd urge your approval tonight. Thank you for your courtesies. My name is Don Williams, 511 Union Street. I'm with Gresham Smith & Partners, and we're the civil engineer representing Beezer Homes on this uh, zoning request before you tonight. Um, just want to let you know that this proposal preserves a large portion of the property that has environmentally sensitive areas with steep slopes and streams. It also involves the relocation of Hoggett Ford right-of-way around some environmentally sensitive areas. Uh, the, the project also contributes towards the construction of a public water line that will help alleviate health and safety issues related to poor drinking water quality and low water pressure in the area and limits fire protection capabilities that threaten some of the existing residents in the area. The water line project was anticipated for many years and was enabled by Council Bill 2015-995, sponsored by Councilman Bruce Stanley, who represented this area previously. Um, Beezer Homes will be contributing $2,000 per unit for, uh, towards the construction of the public water line. The project also provides two new traffic signals on um, Dotson Chapel Road at Hoggett Ford Road and at Dotson Chapel Road at Bell Road. Uh, the project <coughs> includes walking trails that provide connectivity to adjacent properties, and there's been mention of a trail station being proposed nearby. Um, the project's been approved by all metro departments that review planning and, and uh, zoning issues, including the planning department, stormwater, water services, and public works. And we very much appreciate the work of the staff and Councilman Roden on this project. Thank you. My name is Anthony Wyman, and I'm here representing the uh, project proponent, Beezer Homes of Nashville. And uh, just to add a couple of minor points to the previous comments that you've heard, um, one, as we did work through this lengthy process with Councilman Roden under his guidance, uh, along with the many community meetings that we have had, uh, the project was reduced approximately 40 percent from the original uh, density and, and now does provide for over 65 percent of the home sites to back up to or front open space consistent with the character of the area and uh, again uh, is consistent with the community's uh, design standards and I would uh, respectfully ask for your affirmative vote this evening. Thank you. Seeing no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward. Hi, my name's Rebecca Hall. I live Ma'am, if, if you'll pull the mic down just a little bit, it'll be easier, thank you. Is that better? That's better. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, good. my name is Rebecca Hall. I live at 3163 Brandau Road. Uh, there are several issues that should seriously be looked into with this development. Uh, there's 330 acres that are significantly rural. Uh, currently, there are over 100 head of cattle on the applicant's property. There are six horse owners in the area uh, with over 50 horses. This 330 acres, there's only nine landowners with nine homes. <laughs> this is clearly rural. And this property has a rural policy and should stay that way. There are several historical issues to look at. There's an existing historic court order which may prevent further development on Hoggett Ford. This is to preserve the two historic cemeteries adjacent to the proposed property. Uh, there is also a log cabin dates back to 1756 on Mr. Odom's property. And this land is TR. No, excuse me, T2RM should not be changed for a suburban development. And there's also the ecosystem issue. Where's the wildlife going to go? There's, I have not seen any kind of in-depth study with this. And if there is such, we'd like to see it. Thank you. 
Seeing no one else <clears throat> on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, move approval with brief comment. The floor is yours. Thank you. I know Councilman Roten really wanted to be here tonight, and I know that he's worked very hard on this, um, but he has asked that we go ahead and move approval on this, and uh, we're going to defer on third to give a little extra time. There, there may be either a substitute coming, I, I believe. So I, I, I know how hard he has worked on this, and I do ask your approval. Thank you. And Councilman Syracuse, I'll ask uh, the same of you that I asked of Councilman Rosenberg, if you'll step out and get this uh, the lady's name and number so that Councilman Roten can contact her directly. I would appreciate that. Yes, sir. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-769, Council Lady Dowell, changes, uh, I'm sorry, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0, changes 19.27 acres from RM20 to SP zoning for property located at Hickory Hollow Parkway unnumbered south of Mount View Road to permit up to 350 residential units and apply appropriate design standards. Council Lady Dowell. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-769, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing one opposed, all those in favor, please come forward to um, speak. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address. Okay. Wow. My name is Cheryl Bird. I live at 5170 Hickory Hollow Parkway in the Mill Park uh, community. And uh, I do favor the rezoning of this for the special plan to bring in uh, homes at market value. Uh, as you know, in Antioch area, we have, uh, we're very diverse. We have our share of uh, renters, we have our share of subsidized housing, and we really are wanting to see homes come in at market value that will complement our uh, community. And so uh, the other issue that we would like to see uh, along with this bill is the infrastructure of uh, Hick the Hickory Hollow Parkway. That is a two-way uh, street. It's very winding. It converges with Mount View and a railroad crossing. Uh, so in order to accommodate more families coming into the uh, community, I also would hope that you all will uh, include uh, improving that infrastructure with this bill. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kimberly Roach, and I live at 5170 Hickory Hollow Parkway in Mill Park Townhomes. And um, just to sort of uh, complement the earlier comments, I'm here to state my support for this bill. And my reason is because this bill seeks to encourage the development of deeded homes, which can be purchased at market rates. My concern is that this bill does, if this bill does not pass, we will see an increase in subsidized or low-cost developments. We already have a number of these developments in the area, and it is now becoming uh, very saturated. I would like to see a plan put in motion to develop more homes that are attractive to potential home buyers. This will promote more diversity and help our community to thrive. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emily Malone. I live at 5170 Hickory Hollow Parkway in the Mill Park subdivision. Um, just to add to what the, my other two neighbors said, I would like for everyone to really consider the traffic implications that would um, come about if we had a high density um, development put in. Um, what Jacobia is 
presenting would cap everything at 350 units. That would only add at least 350 cars onto Hickory Hollow Parkway. Um, and the development is going up at what was considered, I believe, the deadliest intersection in Nashville, which is Hickory Hollow Parkway and Mount View Road. And in fact, this morning, I passed an accident where there was a car on the side of the road in a ditch. So I would like for the developer to at least look into some kind of traffic study to help alleviate what we already have as what we already consider terrible traffic in Antioch. Thank you. Please move evening, on. Mr. Vice me. Mayor, members of the council, uh, I'm Ken Renner. I'm here representing Vastland Companies, uh, the property owner. Uh, we live at, uh, or we uh, work at 1720 West End Avenue. And uh, to answer the lady's question who just spoke, yes, we are going to be required to do a traffic study at this location, and we're committed to following what we need to do to make the traffic uh, safe. Um, I have a little bit of a, a laryngitis this evening, which my wife uh, very much appreciates. But I'd like to uh, thank Ms. Dowell for all your work with us over the last year and a half uh, to get this thing in shape so that it benefits uh, the community and uh, it's something we can live with as well. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Uh, good evening, my name is Nathan Homer. I'm actually uh, a new homeowner in the Mill Park community. I just bought in three months ago. Uh, I'm committed to developing the area in a good way and I believe this plan has the best option to do that under the circumstances. I am new to the issues, so I've only just read up a little bit on it, but from what I can gather, uh, Ms. Dow has put things together nicely to encourage growth in this area. So I'd like to encourage uh, everything that uh, the previous speakers have mentioned be taken into account. I'm glad they will from the sounds of, of you, sir. Uh, and I, I hope this bill passes. Thank you. Seeing no one else in support, those in opposition, please come forward. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Yes, I would like to move for approval with just a brief explanation. Closures. Thank you. I just want to thank, I'm just uh, overwhelmed seeing all of my neighbors come out. I think this is probably a uh, first for me, so I want to tell you all how much I appreciate it. Uh, we are definitely a community on the rise, and we have people to drive all the way out and participate in our public hearing today. But I also want to thank my council body. I came to you a year and a half ago about this legislation and um, about um, not concentrating poverty in the area, about providing homes people can buy, and also about uh, the infrastructure. And I'm really happy to say it, you know, we had a plan to downsize, but we were able to uh, come up with a, uh, a resolution to provide uh, some development that complements the existing development. We still have the infrastructure issue, but I'm hoping that we can uh, work it out because Hickory Hollow Parkway is far from a parkway. Uh, so, but with that being said, I want to thank Baslin for working with us. I hope they keep their word and uh, do as we have agreed to do and uh, build something that complements the existing development and give our community an opportunity to have homeowners who are vested in the area and who are looking to buy in the area. Um, we um, uh, are, you know, growing. We have a lot of jobs coming in, and so there's no reason why we can't have these opportunities for people to uh, live in our community, that work in our community. So. With those comments, I ask for your approval, and thank you. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-770, uh, approved by the Planning Commission 4 to 3, changes 0.68 acres from RS5 to RM9A, zoning for property located at 1308 Montgomery Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, thank you very much, um, Vice Mayor. We're going to defer this. Um, to the August 1st, the first public hearing of August, the applicant failed to put a sign notice out front. And Motion so without proper notice, we're gonna move it. Thank you, sir. Motion to defer to the August public hearing, properly seconded, all in favor? Opposed, motion carries. <coughs> BL 2017-771, Councilman Elrod, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 2.31 acres from OR20 to SP zoning for property located at 326 Welch Road to remit up to 81 residential units. Councilman Elrod. Move to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-771, please raise your hands. Opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Did you see anybody, Councilman Elrod? No, sir. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Elrod. Move approval. 
There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-772, Councilman Syracuse, approved by the Planning Com Commission 601. Applies a historic landmark overlay district for 1.85 acres of property located at 2250 Lebanon Pike. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I don't know if you want to take 72 and 73 together as they pertain to the same thing, or do you want to take them separate? We we'll can. take them separate. Okay. Uh, open a public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-772, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Syracuse. Move approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 773, Councilman Syracuse, approved by the Planning Commission 601. Applies a neighborhood landmark overlay district for 5.92 acres of property located at 2250, 2254, Lebanon Pike, and Lebanon Pike, unnumbered, and Revere Place at the corner of Bradley Parkway Ramp and Lebanon Pike. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017 773, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman uh, Syracuse. Thank you, my Vice Mayor. Uh, move approval, brief comment. Floor is yours. Thank you. B very briefly, this is just very exciting. Thanks to Lewis and Connie James for buying a uh, premier historic site in uh, in Nashville and in Donaldson, uh, the Bel Air Mansion. It goes back to almost the 1790s, and so I'm very thankful that we're able to put a historic overlay on the building and a neighborhood landmark over the entire site to protect it for the future. So thank you, and I move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Councilman Scott Davis. Councilman Scott Davis would like to be recorded as abstaining. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-774, Councilman Scott Davis, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes 0.2 acres from RM20 to SP zoning for property located at 106 North 8th Street to permit up to six residential units. Oh. Councilman Scott Davis. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-774, please raise your hands. Those opposed? You see anybody opposed? I didn't see anybody. There was one person. Those opposed, please raise your hands. Oh, okay. It's okay, but those in favor, please come forward to speak. Hello, my name is Melba Jackson, and I'm the applicant of this request. Um, I just wanted, I was born and raised in this neighborhood, in this home, and I'm really looking forward to the growth of East Nashville and contributing to that growth. Um, so I would like to request you all approval on this project. Not only will I be adding to the growth, growth of this area, I will also plan to reside uh, in one of these units as well. So I would appreciate any consideration given to me for approval. Thank you. Good evening, Chip Howarth on behalf of the applicant. Um, we had a great uh, meeting with the neighborhood. Everyone seemed to be in favor that attended. Uh, we've been working with staff. Um, this was on consent and planning commission um, and unanimously approved and then working with uh, Councilman Davis to work through the process. Um, no opposition until tonight, so we hope that we can get your support. Thank you. Seeing no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward. My name is Lena Stanley, and I live at 800 Ramsey Street, and it's a quiet neighborhood. And to put more in there, we have apartments over there, and to put more units over there, you'll be with probably drugs, a lot of different uh, parties and everything. And that's why I object for it, because they're moving a hotel, they're putting a hotel up there, Father. And you got to, you have churches and different things, and to be it loud. I mean, if you're young, you have to go to work, people have parties. To have that many units in there, and 
older people would love to have a wrist also. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Pleasures. As the applicant spoke, she grew up in the home. Um, it was her mother's residence for years. Um, the applicant is wanting to develop her family's home and their land in East Nashville and live there herself on one of the units. The applicant came before the Neighborhood Association two times, Maxwell Heights. And those of you who know Maxwell know that we have a lot of active and very wonderful neighbors in that group. I'm very sympathetic to the neighbor, and I'm going to ask the applicant to reach out. Maybe there's some amendments we can do before third reading to, to, make, to make the neighbor that's in opposition feel better. But I know the neighbors know each other, because you know, people in that area have lived around and near each other for a long time. Um, the applicant is a wonderful pillar of our community, and so is the person in opposition. And hopefully that we could come to a consensus, but I'd like to move further and I encourage the applicant to reach out to her neighbor, and maybe there's some things that we can do on third, you know, to make, you know, the opposition, the one person opposition feel a little bit better. But this is the kind of development I like to see when someone who's owned this home, who grew up in the community, you know, and who is a, and if I dare to say it, an educated woman from the community building and developing property in East Nashville and living there and making homes for her family members. And I wanna encourage that, but at the same time, we wanna be sympathetic to the neighbor that may be afraid of increased noise and some of the increased traffic too. So I just wanna thank the council for giving her this opportunity. Move approval, please. Motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed, motion carries. Bill 2017-775, Council Lady Roberts. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Amends 1.9 acres of the specific plan district for property located at 5100 Centennial Boulevard to permit medical office, personal care services, restaurant, fast food, and uses allowed under current SP. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open up the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-775, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Council A. Roberts. I'd like to move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? I'm going to do that again. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm not sure it carried the first time. BL 2017-776, uh, Councilman Freeman. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes 0.33 acres from RR20 and RS5 to RM20A zoning for property located at 341 Oriole Avenue and Austin Avenue, unnumbered at the corner of Austin Avenue and Oriole Avenue. Uh, Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, unlike my fellow neighbors, I'm not going to defer to August 1st. I'd like to defer indefinitely so we can uh, talk to this, talk to the property owner, make sure that we work it out when we got a good plan. And so far, the neighbors are just not uh, on board. And so just please, uh, motion to uh, defer indefinitely. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017. Uh, 777, Councilman Scott Davis, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 701, changes 0 .30 acres from RS5 to SB zoning for property located at 1424 Steinbeck Avenue to permit an existing structure to be used as, as a de uh, detached accessory dwelling unit and to permit all other uses of the RS5 zoning district, Councilman Scott Davis. You, Vice Mayor, I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017 777, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? You don't have to. I'd like to. Um, Vice Mayor and members of the council, I appreciate your time this evening. Um, I ask you to please excuse my appearance. I just drove in from my daughter's Girl Scout camp and we've been tie-dying. Um, uh, I would like to thank Councilman Scott Davis for working with my family for the last year and a half to get this uh, rezoning approved. Um, the successory dwelling was on the property when we bought it 10 years ago and um, we, would, we bought it in hopes to have a place for our parents to live someday with us. 
um, when they get older. And in the meantime, we would like to use it um, as affordable housing for people who would like to live in our neighborhood, which is quickly becoming um, inaccessible for um, renters who would like to pay something below $1,000 a month to live in a small studio apartment. So um, we would just really appreciate your approval, and thanks to Scott Davis again for all of his help with this. Thank you. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Move for approval with a brief explanation. Floor is yours, briefly. I'd like to thank the planning. I'd like to thank Ariana, one of my community leaders, for her patience and her prayers and her hard work. I'd like to thank the planning staff for their hard work in this, as well as Brandon and Mike Jamison for their time and efforts. And move for approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed, motion carries. PL 2017-778, Councilman Hastings approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission, not nine and zero, changes point 22 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 100 Fern Avenue to permit up to two units with appropriate design standards. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to open up the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-778, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman David, I'm sorry, Councilman Hastings. I've said Davis a lot tonight. <laughs> yes, so. sir. Councilman would like to move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. BL 2017-779, Councilman Bedney. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6 and 0. Changes 143.92 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for property located at Burkett Road unnumbered north of Westcott Lane to permit a mixed use development. Councilman Bedney. Do I move the amendment first or open the public hearing? That's up to you. Let's move the amendment. I move the amendment to uh, add the fire station in this property. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. I move to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of Bill 2017-779, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed? There was nobody there. Yeah, I didn't think so. Do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bedney. I move to approve. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-780, Councilman Withers. Changes 0 0.60 acres from CN to R6, I'm sorry, from CN and R6 to SB zoning for properties located at 1401 and 1405 Holly Street to permit an addition to the existing daycare. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-780 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, uh, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Withers. I would like to move approval. There's a motion to approve. Uh, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-781, Councilman Scott Davis, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 18.74 acres from RS5 to RM20A uh, for properties located at Penning Avenue unnumbered, Public Street unnumbered, Lucille Street unnumbered, and a portion of Dickerson Pike unnumbered, and by changing 1.89 acres from CS and RS5 to MUGA for property located at 1412 Dickerson Pike, and a portion of two parcels along Dickerson Pike unnumbered west of Fern Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, yes, I'd like to open public hearing, please. With all those in favor, Bill 2017-781, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Uh, seeing none opposed, declare the public hearing. Uh, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 uh, 782, Council Lady Roberts, disapproved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0, changes 2.64 acres from CS and R6 to RM15, zoning for property located at 622 Crawley Drive. Uh, Council Lady Roberts. Hey, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to open up the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017 782, please raise your hands. See the slides. 
The request is to change the zoning from R6 to C R6 and CS to RM15. The Planning Commission recommendation is to disapprove. There's a shot of the property. The existing zoning of the property is R6, which is one and two family residential, and CS, commercial service. The property is located south of Robertson Avenue and east of Crowley Drive. The land use policy for the property is split. The property is T4 Urban Neighborhood Center along Crowley Drive, and the remainder of the property is T4 Urban Neighborhood Maintenance. Uh, this shows you the existing land use pattern of the, uh, surrounding the property. Um, a street view, there are two streets that have frontage on the property, Knoll Avenue and Crowley Drive. Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove as the property has two policies, um, is split between two policies, neighborhood center and neighborhood, I'm sorry, neighborhood maintenance. Um, the staff felt that the, uh, sorry, the Planning Commission felt that the proposed zoning would be inconsistent with the policies and wouldn't provide for appropriate design standards to meet the goals of both policies considering the property has frontage on two streets. I'd like to move for approval with a brief We need to do the public hearing now. I'd I'm like sorry, to do that. I got out of line. I'd like to do the public hearing, please. All those in favor of uh, BL 2017-782, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, those in favor would like to speak, Mr. Dale. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Um, Chairman. I just wanted to say that um, this council member has spent a lot of time with her community on this. I know that. Uh, my clients have taught, I have not attended all these meetings, but they've attended many meetings. Uh, this is an area that's evolving for sure. It abuts, an, it is a trailer park, you saw that and it abuts an RM20 zoning. And so she's listing her constituents and I'm sure she's gonna articulate that, but I just wanted to praise her for all the hard work that she's done. Thank you. The, color, the public hearing closed. Council Lady Roberts. That was a good birthday present. This is my birthday. Um, so I'd like to approve with a brief explanation. Motion to approve, it's properly seconded. The floor is yours. So we've worked on this almost for two years. We've had 11 neighborhood meetings and two private meetings. And this is definitely something that I'm gonna to continue to work with the neighborhood on before third reading. But in this situation, I'm doing what's best for the neighbors and I'm doing what the neighbors have asked me to do. So I, although I respect planning, I, I disagree and would move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Mr. Mendez would like to be recorded as abstaining. Otherwise, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-783, Council Lady Van Rees. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission, nine and zero. Changes 0.96 acres from RS20 to uh, SPR zoning for property located at 630 Old Acre Boulevard to permit up to 13 residential units. Council Lady Van Rees. Please open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-783, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward to speak. State your name and address, and you have three minutes each. Good evening, thank you, Vice Mayor. My name's Kraft Hayes, I'm the developer on the property. I wanna first thank Councilwoman Van Rees for all of her support on this project, she is definitely a uh, paving a way for, for Madison and that community as far as bringing better residential development um, that way. I've been working on this project um, countlessly to bring 13 units to the corner of Old Hickory Boulevard and uh, North Marthona, what's in already a, well, I'll let Andy Stone come up after me and talk more about it from an engineering perspective. We've had multiple community meetings um, and readings as well as I've been at all of the Madison Station meetings to gather support for this project. And so we've worked really hard to, to take input from the community and make sure that we're providing something that, that people are looking for and that they want. And so this is the first time we've heard any, I guess, uh, concern and would like to make sure we address any of that as well. I'm gonna let Andy talk a little bit more about the engineering side of it. Uh, 
Uh, good evening. My name is Andy Stone. Uh, I live in uh, 1403 Ashwood Avenue in Nashville. I uh, just want to thank Councilwoman Van Rees uh, and the neighbors up in Madisonville. We have a very uh, unique project up here. It's 13 residential units. Uh, yeah, Madison is starting to see growth and development, especially with the light rail. Uh, we've worked with the neighborhood uh, and the Councilwoman here to try to come up with a new and different product. Uh, we've taken the history and the culture of the neighborhood and tried to combine that with good architectural standards to make sure that we deliver a product that is acceptable to the neighborhood and acceptable to ourselves and, and something that we can stand behind and be proud of. So uh, we're anxious to hear of any concerns from other citizens and look forward to addressing those as we have with everyone else. So thank you very much. Seeing no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward to speak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Sloan. I'm the owner of uh, 109 Diane Court, which is uh, the property that is three properties away from, you know, the property that's being, you know, under subject to change the zoning. And it's, uh, you know, I've, my family's lived in, you know, the neighborhood for 61 years. It's just been a nice, quiet neighborhood, safe. And I'm just concerned about adding, you know, 13 units will you know disrupt the tranquility and safety of the neighborhood so i just uh, ask that you disapprove the uh, zoning change thank you thank you sir declare the public hearing closed council lady van reese thank you i um look forward to having a discussion with you so please don't leave um before we exchange some information uh, we have had two community meetings on this and uh, a lot of information that has been passed forward and uh, with that i ask for your approval there's a motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-784, Councilman Swope. It's been referred to the Planning Commission of Menza Metro Code to establish maximum permitted height of 10 feet for electric fences with any zoning district where electric fences are permitted. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At this time, so the Planning Commission has a chance to review this, I'd like to ask to defer this two meetings to the August public hearing. Motion to defer to the August public hearing is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 785, Council Lady Roberts, Councilman Kendall's. Kendall approves, uh, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Amends uh, 1.35 acres of a specific plan located at um, 1800 West End Avenue and 1801 and 1807 Hayes Street to add medical office as a permitted use. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open up the public hearing, please. All those in favor, BL 2017-785. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council A. Roberts. I'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-786, Councilman Scott Davis, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6 and 0. Changes 3.79 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 528, 532, 536, and 540 Edwin Street to permit up to 32 residential units. Councilman Scott Davis. Thanks, Mayor. On public hearing, please. All those in favor, Bill 2017-786. 786, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. And Councilman Davis. I move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to the consent agenda. The following matter items are on the consent agenda right now. RS 2017-768 through 778 and 782 and 784. Sorry. Are there any other items to be taken off the consent agenda? No one's seeking recognition. If you'll bear with me, I'll read through the consent agenda. RS 2017-768, Councilman Cooper, approves a cooperation agreement between Metro and the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency. 
RS-2017-769, Councilman Withers, approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the Martha O'Brien Center to operate a mobile unit to provide services to current and potential women, infants, and children program recipients. RS-2017-770, Councilman Cooper approves a contract for services between the Board of Health and the Tennessee Department of Health to provide prenatal enrollment assistance to 10 care with cover kids. I'm sorry, with 10 care and cover kids. RS-2017-771, Council Lady Gilmore and Council Lady Wiener approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the Mississippi State University to provide clinical experience opportunities for graduate veterinary program students, residents, and interns. Council, uh, RS-2017-772, Councilman Pulley, Henderson, and Cooper approves a grant from the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide materials and labor to be used in the construction and installation of a batting cage and bullpen area in support of the Green Hills Girls Softball League in Green Hills Park. RS-2017-773, Council Lady Henderson, Councilman Cooper approves a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide 12 big band dances in Centennial Park. RS-2017-774, Council Lady Henderson, Elrod, and Cooper approves a post-recovery tree planting grant from Keep America Beautiful and the United State and the United Parcel Service Foundation to the Metro Public Works Department for trees to be planted in the riparian zone along the greenway of Mill Creek Watershed. RS 2017-775, Councilman Pardue, Cooper, and others approves amendment to an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation, the Department of Public Works, and the City of Millersville for the replacement of Old Shiloh Road Bridge. RS 2017-776, uh, Councilman Dowell, Elrod, Allen, and Cooper approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the construction of the interchange modification of I-24 East at Old Hickory Boulevard, I'm sorry, at Hickory Hollow Parkway. Um, RS-2017-777, Councilman Leonardo Hastings and others, authorizes the Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into a utility relocation contract with the Tennessee Department of Transportation to construct Hi Clarksville Highway from Ashland City Highway to Briley Parkway. RS-2017-778, Leonardo Hastings and others, authorizes the Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into utility relocation contract with the T Tennessee Department of Transportation to con construct Clarksville Highway from Ashland City Highway to Barley Parkway, RS-2017-782, Councilman Cooper uh, authorizes the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of David Ray against the Metro government in the amount of $11,500. RS-2017-784 recognizes Metro government employees for the commitment to and service, I'm sorry, for the commitment to service and volunteer work, Council, um, and that is the consent agenda. Committee reports. Councilman John Cooper. Thank you, um, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the Budget and Finance Committee met yesterday and uh, approved uh, 768 12 uh, 40 against, 769 940 against, and uh, Resolution 770, 772, 773, 774. 775, 776, 777, 778, and s uh, by a 1040 against, and resolution 782, 1140 against. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council Lee Gilmore, Health Hospitals and Social Services. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Health Hospitals and Social Services Committee. Uh, voted uh, a recommendation for approval, five, four, and zero against for resolution 2017-769. Resolution 2017-770, five, four, and zero against. It was uh, recommended for approval. And resolution 2017-771, five, four, and zero against. It was recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Henderson, Parks, Library, and Recreation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Parks, Library, and Recreation Committee met to discuss bills, or rather resolutions, 772, 773, and 774. 
We recommended approval for all of them, six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Allen, Planning Zone. Uh, Council Lady Johnson, Planning Zone Historical. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning Zoning Historical Committee met yesterday. Uh, RS 2017 775, 776, 777, 778. Uh, we voted for approval 10, 4, 0 against. Thank you, Council Lady Councilman Elrod, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Works recommended for approval 9 in favor, 0 against resolutions 774, 75, 76. 77 and 78. Thank you, sir. Councilman Shulman, rules confirmation public elections. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules had resolution RS 2017 784. Approve that one 840 against. I believe that's all the committee reports in. I would move to approve all the resolutions on the consent agenda. It, motion to approve the consent agenda is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. That brings us back to RS 2017 779. Councilman Elrod amends uh, ordinance BL number BL 2016 to 235 to increase permit fees for closures in the right of way um, permit high impact area. I'm just going to read it. That's what it says. Thank you, Mr. Brother. We can take uh, 70, uh, 780 and 781. We can take them all three. They're all going to have the three, the same. Or we can do them individually. I was Let's just trying to do them individually. Let's just committee reports, please. Uh, Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance. I voted yesterday 11 to 0 to, at the request of the sponsor, to defer and re refer to the second meeting in September. Councilman. Public Works recommended a meeting uh, deferral to the second meeting in September. Nine in favor, zero against, and I so move. Motion to defer to the second meeting in September is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-780, Councilman Elrod, amends ordinance number BL 2016-235 to create a fee for a right-of-way site management plan permit. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted 11-4-0 against to defer and re-refer at the request of the sponsor to the second meeting in September. Floor is yours. Public Works recommended uh, the same deferral and so move. Motion to defer to the second meeting in September. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 781, Councilman Elrod requests that all fee revenue from right of way temporary closure permits be used for staffing expenses and other direct costs of administering such permits. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted 11 4 0 against to defer and re refer at the request of the sponsor to the second meeting in September. Thank you, sir. Public Works had the same uh, recommendation, nine in favor, against, so move. Motion to defer to the second meeting in September is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 783, Councilman Shulman approves the election of notaries public for Davidson County. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, we had a late filed amendment that has to try to get on this bill, um, which I believe would have to require the suspension of the rules. Uh, it's filed by Council Lady Murphy. Council Lady Murphy. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to amend this bill. Councilman Shulman. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Then um, the committee approved um, this resolution, 2017-783-840 against, uh, and then had no trouble with allowing the late filed amendment to be filed and placed on this bill. Is there objection to the suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Councilman Shulman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Then I would move the amendment uh, that's been filed um, so we can get the amendment on the bill, and then I would move the bill. motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on the bill as amended. Okay, the then I would move the bill as amended. There's a motion to, uh, to adopt. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without uh, objection, we'll take all those matters together. Seeing no objection, is there a motion to, a bill, to approve bills on introduction and first reading? Move. Moved and properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on second reading. 
<coughs> BL 2017-705, Councilman Schulman and Councilor A. Blaylock establishes an incentive program to allow neighborhoods to be awarded for meeting all codes requirements. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget and Finance voted 12-4-0 against at the request of the sponsor to defer indefinitely. Councilman Swope. Coe's Fairs Farmers Market voted 3-4-0 four, against to defer indefinitely as requested by the sponsor. Councilman Schulman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would move to defer indefinitely with a very brief explanation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, this is the uh, codes free incentive neighborhood bill. Um, money was not put in the budget for this. So at this point we can't fund it, but I know people are interested in it. We're gonna continue working on it. So we're gonna move to defer indefinitely. Repeat my motion. There's a motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-706. Councilman Scott Davis establishes uh, the Metropolitan Neighborhood Improvement Fund Commission and dedicates a portion of the transient occupants and privileges, privileged taxes generated by short-term rental properties to, to the Metropolitan Neighborhood Improvement Fund. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer this. Um, Let's get our committee reports first. I'm Councilman Bedding. Yeah, thank you, Vice Mayor. The committee voted to defer by rule. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to defer by rule. That matters deferred by rule. Yeah, I was going to defer it anyway to track with the new committee where Mr. Shulman received the battlefield promotion. Um, basically, you know, we all want Airbnb to pay their fair share. And so I'm going to ask if we can maybe defer it um, indefinitely. Was there an objection to, to suspending the rules to defer indefinitely? Seeing none, there's a motion to defer indefinitely. Is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-741. Council uh, Lady Hurt, Council Lady Allen amends a Metro Code requiring notice of parking fees, fines, and penalties to be posted at parking lots and garages. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Potts. 741. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic and parking voted to approve uh, 4 4 0 against. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Up, opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 743. Councilman Mendez, Sledge, and others. Terminates agree an agreement between the Metro between Metro and the U.S. Marshal Service to house federal inmates. Councilman Mendez. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted yesterday at the request of the sponsor to withdraw 12-4-0 against. Councilman Pardew. Withdrawn by sponsor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor, this is one of two immigration-related bills before us tonight. This is the one that would rene renegotiate a 21-year-old contract that allows Metro to act as a regional ICE jail. In any other context, the council would demand a seat at the table on a 21-year-old contract that has no end in sight. Unfortunately, this hit a political buzzsaw. In the county, reaction was mixed, but there are large areas of the county with substantial support for this bill and the other immigration-related bill. Outside the county, there was the typical Nashville bashing that we unfortunately see too often, and there was piling on by the Republican gubernatorial candidates, including calls for a special session of the state legislature. This all culminated with the sheriff and the mayor both asking this body to reconsider the legislation. With that, the handwriting was on the wall about how this bill was going to go. I want to thank my many co-sponsors. Our only goal was to meet all of our obligations to the state and federal government and to let all our neighbors know, both citizens and not, that the Metro government will treat everybody with honor, respect, and basic human dignity. I thank the sponsors, the co-sponsors, all of them for supporting all of our neighbors, but at this time, I withdraw the bill. BL 2017 uh, 744, O'Connell, Elrod, and others approves a parking agreement between the Metro Traffic and Parking Commission and Warner Music Incorporated for the use of up to 35 parking spaces for a fee and library parking garage. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. After a robust discussion, and budget and finance voted to approve 1240 against. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, with no discussion, our planning committee voted 1040 <laughs> against. Councilman Potts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic and parking voted to approve 440 four, against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to move approval without a brief comment. There's a motion to approve. <laughs> it's properly seconded. No one seeking recognition. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Now, that's how the committees work, I guess, right? <laughs> There was, must have been like three hours of, com of discussion about this. None on the floor. Good job. BL 2017-787, Councilman O'Connell and Cooper amends the Metro Code, revising the rate of, of the levy of special assessment for the Gulch um, Central Business Improvement District for Metro Nashville. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance voted 12-4-0 against to recommend the bill. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-789, uh, Council Lady Allen, Councilman Withers. Amends the Metro Code pertaining to the office. Point, point of order. Just quickly, I think there's one more. Oh, did I skip over one? Yep. Um, my, my apologies. BL 2017-787. Nope. 788. <laughs> They say like the same thing. That's probably why I skipped now. Two different districts. Uh, men's and Metro Code setting the rate of levy as special assessment for the downtown central uh, business improvement district, district for Metro Nashville. I'm a taxpayer in that district. I may have skipped over it like subconsciously. I'm like, uh, I'll just skip that one. <laughs> Councilman O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted 12-4-0 against to recommend the bill. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for catching that. I'm sure I would have been in trouble. BL 2017-789, Council Lady Allen, Councilman Withers, amends the Metro Code pertaining to the Office of Administrative Hearing Officer. Council uh, Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Swope. Codes Fairs Farmers Market. Uh, recommended passage of the bill, 340 against. Council Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a very brief explanation. Pleasures. Thank you. This simply uh, expands the purview of the administrative hearing officer to also cover Title uh, 17, which is zoning and codes. But with that, I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-790, Councilman Mendez, Freeman, and others. Amends for a code pertaining to health insurance benefits for members of the Metro Council after they leave office. Councilman Mendez. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted yesterday a 10-2 to defer indefinitely. Council Lady Murphy. Personnel Committee voted to indefinitely defer. Four in favor, zero against. Councilman Mendez. I think by rule that's indefinitely deferred. Def Sorry. Deferred indefinitely. Uh, BL 2017-791, Councilman Leonardo L. Rodden Allen authorizes Metro to accept permanent and temporary easements for the Bordeaux Hills Stormwater Improvement Project for seven properties located at 3300 Cocoa Drive. 1468 and 1495 County Hospital Road, and 3189, 3191, 3195, and 3197 LaGrange Drive. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Lady Johnson, Mina. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning Historic Committee met and voted 10 4 0 against for approval. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend approval, nine in favor, zero against. Councilman? I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry. Bill 2017-792, Council Lady Roberts, L. Rod, and Allen abandons existing sanitary sewer main and easements and accepts new water mains, fire hydrants, sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and any associated easements for property located at 6 670 James Avenue. 
Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like committee reports, please. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning zoning historical uh, voted four in favor, zero against, four by the Lady <laughs> Council Member Roberts sponsored bill. Perfect. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend approval, nine in favor, zero against. Council Lady Roberts. Um, thank you for the shout out from Councilman Johnson. Move for approval, please. Motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed, motion carries. BL 2017-793. Councilman Elrod, Council Lady Allen, abandons existing water main and easements and accepts new water main, fire hydrant, and any associated easements for property located at 40, 463 Harding Industrial Drive. Councilman Elrod. Read your voice, please. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning zoning historical voted uh, 10 for, zero against, uh, to approval. Councilman Elrod. Public works working approval, nine in favor, zero against, so move. The motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-794, Council Lady Allen, Councilman Elrod, abandons existing easement rights for property located at 1710 Belcourt Avenue. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning uh, zoning historical uh, voted 10 for 0 against for approval. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend approval, 9 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Lady Allen. Move for approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 795, Councilman O'Connell authorizes LC Germantown LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground and aerial encroachments in the right of way located at 1226 2nd Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning zoning historical voted uh, 10 4 0 against to approval. Councilman Elrod. At the request of the sponsor, pub, the Public Works Committee recommended one million deferral, nine in favor, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral, please. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-408. Uh, that bring, We're on third reading now. BL 2016-408, Councilman Syracuse and Roten. Changes uh, 285.03 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for property located at 2040 Hickory Hill Lane to permit up to 500 single family lots. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, we're going to uh, request to defer this one meeting. Thank you. Motion to defer. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-611. Councilman Bednay amends the Metro Code to require the consent of adjacent property owners, homeowner associations, condominium associations, and other such community associations prior to issuance of a short-term rental property permit. Councilman Bednay. Okay, first I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill is substituted. And then I'd like to uh, defer indefinitely. I think, uh, sorry, committee reports. I'm sorry, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning zoning historical uh, voted 10 for, uh, 10 for uh, to indefinite deferral as substituted. Uh, Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman Bedname. Yeah, I requested a deferral. Uh, that doesn't mean that. Uh, I have any problem with the legislation. I just wanted to work with you, Vice Mayor, and your request to do the ad hoc short-term rental committee. The issue of the impact of short-term rentals on HOAs and subdivisions outside the core of the city is it's a different animal. Uh, for those of you that live at the core, short-term rental is different than for us that live in subdivisions. Um, like I pay, many people will be jealous, I only pay 130 bucks a year in HOA dues. If we have to hire in lawyers to help us get rid of every short-term rental in violation of HOA rules, it will dramatically increase the cost of legal services for all these subdivisions all over the city. So uh, I'm going to withdraw it, uh, I mean, not withdraw it, do an indefinite deferral, and then uh, hoping that the committee will look into this and find a way to uh, take care of it. Thank you. There's a motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-726, Councilman Mendez amends the Metro Code to add a requirement for the Department of Finance to maintain a written debt management policy for the Metropolitan Government. Councilman Mendez. All committee reports are in. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Um, thank you. Um, this is the one where we're going to uh, add to what's in the debt management policy, including after this passes, a discussion of what impact, if any, metropolitan government's net pension obligation and unfunded OPEB obligations have on the amount of debt that is advisable for the city. Um, I'd like to thank Finance for working with me on the terms of this and my co-sponsors for some supporting this also. Um, one uh, deliverable that's been promised by finance um, that I understand we'll have in the next week or so is a summary um, that will be delivered to all of us that will um, show the last uh, three to five years, it's going to be three years for the pension obligation and five years for the OPEB obligation, and then that'll be updated again in the fall after the, the fiscal year that just ended, some numbers are in, um, just to give us um, a sense of the increasing obligation. Um, I, I believe that the combined unfunded OPEB obligation for the metro government and the school system will get close to or top $3 billion this year, and it's important that we uh, uh, start having a conversation about that. So I'd like to renew my motion to approve this on third reading. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-737 amends the Metro Code concerning the regulation and permitting of passenger vehicles for hire. Councilman Pardue. Move for approval. I think we have a late filed amendment to this. Is it a friendly amendment? It's a friendly amendment. Does it show who filed by chance? Councilman Elrod. Councilman Elrod, did you, are you seeking recognition, Councilman Elrod? I do. Yes, sir, and I apologize, Councilman Pardue, that was my fault for, it is, it is meant to be friendly, but I'd move to suspend the rules to allow uh, the, the filed amendment to be considered. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Councilman Elrod appeared before the Rules Committee, explained what we were trying to do. Uh, the committee was okay with the suspension. All right. So, Councilman Pardue, you've moved to approve I move to approve, but I don't know what the amendment does. Well, let, I'm going <laughs> to, we're, 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 right now we're approving without the amendment. Do you have anything to say? And then I'll come to Councilman Elrod. I got nothing to say. <laughs> you just, you got plenty to say. You just won't say it to me. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Elrod, I'm, you're, this is worth it if nothing else to get him to talk more. This is great. Um, <laughs> Thank, um, this is, amendment has just been talking with some of the folks in the, uh, uh, let's say, the passenger tourism vehicle industry um, that are downtown, that they were worried that the Traffic Licensing Commission would uh, uh, put this into motion too quickly for them to react. So that all the amendment does is just delays implementation for 90 days so that it allows the TLC to talk with those that are going to be permitting and uh, work with them on the rules and regulations and to get information out because they, we don't know who all, the, all, who all the you may be permitting or regulating. So this gives uh, 90 days for that implementation to go uh, into effect. And some of the business owners are, I think, it's eased their fears. I think some of it, uh, some of them, their fears have been, been eased and I'll get to that on the bill, but that's what the amendment does and I move approval. Are you Councilman O'Connell, are you seeking uh, recognition on the amendment or on the bill? All right. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The, we're now on the bill as amended. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. In light of that, and I think um, with some of those in the uh, industries that would have uh, you know a, a change in its regulatory environment, uh, feeling that they have not had a chance to kind of review this legislation, I would uh, seek to move to defer for one meeting, please. Motion to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. Councilman Elrod, are you seeking recognition on that? Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm going to uh, move, uh, uh, I'm not going to move to table, but I'm going to ask you to uh, vote against the deferral. Because basically this bill just does two things. Um, it, it extends or increases the number of pa people in a vehicle that uh, the TLC, the Transportation Licensing Commission, 
can regulate from 16, including the driver, to 21, including the driver. And that is basically getting at many vehicles that are in downtown, principally um, wagons, platform vehicles, and that kind of thing, where uh, they're open air, there's no top to many of them, there's just a railing, there's no seat belts. And uh, in my conversation with some of the folks in the industry, I think it would only take one person falling out of one of those vehicles where we would have people down here at the council wondering why are we not regulating these vehicles? You have people, we have people fall, you know, able to fall out of a pedal carriage that we're regulating, but not ones that might fall over a railing. And to me, those are similar vehicles that need to be regulated. And this doesn't place any more regulation or requirements on them that, are, that aren't already required of similar vehicles. It just increases the number from 16 to 21, including the driver. That's the first thing that it does. The second thing that it does is that if, if you can't fall into the many categories that the Tra Transportation Licensing Commission has out of different types of vehicles from pedal carriages, pedicabs, slow moving vehicles, um, go karts, um, you know, all different kinds of things, then you can't be, uh, you, then you can't operate on metro streets. You have to have some other kind of way to be licensed. Um, now, basically, and I try to be uh, transparent. Basically, um, what that would uh, put in, I think, some serious limbo is the tractor, the John Deere tractor that operates pulling a wagon downtown, which I have, I just talked to the owner of, him, of that company outside, and I've been opposed to something like that operating on streets in Nashville because I grew up in Cheatham County, and those kind of things are not supposed to be operating in downtown. They're supposed to be on farms and only operating on streets or roads as they travel between farms or to and from the gas station. So that's what this bill does. It is very simple. And I think many in the industry are worried about, well, what are the regulations going to look like? Well, that's why we just amended it to give them 90 days to see what it will look like. And the one, some of the ones that have talked to me that still have concerns over it, they said, well, we don't know what it's going to be like. We don't know, you know what is really coming down, you know, what's going to come next. Well, nothing can happen until the bill passes. The Transportation Licensing Commission can't do anything until a bill, until the ordinance passes. They can't start putting regulations together. And to be... Frank, I don't want this council to start, you know, figuring out how high handrails or, you know, rails have to be on these kind of wagons. That's what we establish commissions for. But if we put this off another week, not many of those questions are going to be answered because that's what we have set up the Transportation Licensing Commission to do. I'm opposed to the, to the motion of deferral because this just gives the commission the authority to do it. It's their, uh, it's their you know, reason for being to put these regulations in place. Uh, the, the members or the uh, company owners that I've talked to, I've committed to them that once the Traffic Lic Transportation Licensing Commission gets set up and going on these, that if there's some other kind of issue going on, I've committed to at least listening to them and fixing them if necessary. And I've tried to do that with other issues with Public Works or the Transportation Licensing Commission. Um, but these things are operating in downtown where um, you can't, you're not supposed to ride around people in the back of a pickup, but they're, um, that's against state law. But these folks are riding around in open air wagons and trailers, platform vehicles with just railings. Now, some of them are operating fine and may not have to um, undertake any changes to their vehicles, but we can't do that until this ordinance passes. So I would um, ask you to vote against the motion to defer. Councilman Davis on the motion to defer. I uh, just wanted to support Councilman Railrod. Uh, when we uh, regulated the pedicabs and pedal taverns and those sort of things. We, we need the framework sent to the TLC basically so they can come up with a framework for these uh, vehicles. So I think we, you know, all we're trying to do here is continue to allow them to have this regulation and come up with the framework as we've added more of these kind of crazy and wacky vehicles in Nashville. So I support moving forward. Thank you. Oh, we're on the motion to defer. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion fails. That brings us to the to the bill as amended. Councilor Van Rees. Uh, yes, on uh, behalf of the Conventions and Tourism Committee, I just wanted to, to point out that we have had uh, no complaints that we know of, and on behalf of the tourists uh, and their safety, I uh, approve this legislation. All right. Councilman Elrod. Thank you. Just two things. One, did we did adopt the amendment. Is that correct? I thought we did. All right. Second, I wanted to be fair to the owner of the John Deere Tractor Company that I would state his case. Um, 
that he thinks he he doesn't want the bill to go forward, but I, uh, um, for a variety of reasons, but I stated in my opposition to something like that. Um, but that is a discussion that I argue would be something for another ordinance or another bill and not something like this. Um, but he, that... That is also wrapped up in a court case. Mr. Cooper may be able to speak to it about whether or not Metro can regulate it and whether or not that he can operate as a, what I would argue is an agricultural vehicle or, or um, operating on city streets. That is caught up in a court case that is at the Court of Appeals, I believe. But I wanted to go ahead and state that for the record. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You adopt. Uh, let's see. Bill 2017, 738, Councilman Syracuse, amends Metro Code pertaining to hourly rentals of hotel rooms. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move approval. The motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017, 739, Councilman Mendez, Legend and others, amend, amends the Metro Code regarding federal civil, civil immigration laws. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I wanted to thank uh, my colleagues for the discussion that we had on second reading, both for and against. Um, I want to thank the 25 of you who voted to approve this bill on second reading after it was recommended in the Public Safety Committee and the powerful speeches that many of you gave in support. I want to thank the 19 organizations who supported and endorsed this bill. Um, I want to give a, th a special thank you to our counterparts on the Board of Public Education um, who've been steadfast in their support of our immigrant children and families here in Nashville. So it's said in politics that there are no permanent friends and no permanent enemies, uh, but that's wrong. There is a permanent enemy. The permanent enemy is the other. The permanent enemy who we have punished, discriminated against, belittled, and betrayed throughout our history. Our hatred of the permanent enemy has taken many forms over the years, but it has one common thread, fear of the unknown. The less we know about the other, the easier it is to hate them. James Baldwin said that in ignorance, allied with power, it is the most ferocious enemy that justice can have. Our immigrant neighbors came out tonight and they have come out in previous nights to show that they are not afraid and that they should not be feared. They should courage, determination, strength, and resolve. They came because their families are at stake. They came because they still believe in a Nashville together. They came because like many of our constituents, they challenge us to uphold our word. They embody the American values we celebrated this week on Independence Day. They are not our enemy. And yet we still have an us versus them problem. And the problem is with us. We can blame state legislators and members of Congress who call our community members criminals and illegal, but too often we do not respond. We blame those outside Nashville who tell us how we should govern, and yet we don't listen to our own people. We blame court rulings, and yet we don't appeal them. We blame authorities, and yet we do not question them. We blame lies and falsehoods, and yet we do not challenge them. We say we are welcoming, and yet we do not defend those we welcome. One of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well-fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? It's not our fault, we say. That's on them. Immigrants come here because they believe we are who we say we are. A nation of laws, yes, but first and foremost, a land of opportunity. If we can't count on our federal government to uphold that opportunity, then we as Nashville should keep that promise for our residents. Now, I've heard way too much over the last couple of weeks about telling people to come here the right way and way too little about how that actually happens. A lot of people over the years have been told to do things the right way, when the thing is the right way never existed. There was no ladder to climb. There was no path to citizenship. There was just a red line, another test, a blind eye, sharp stick, a not today, and a not tomorrow. That's how it was designed, us versus them. You know, Jesus described the kingdom of God as a city on a hill. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. A city that serves others cannot do so in darkness. Its light will shine too brightly. If we truly are who we say we are in Nashville, we will stick out. And we have to decide if we're okay with that. Because this conversation doesn't end here, and it isn't limited to a single issue. We will be challenged again, and the question will be the same. Is it us versus them, or are we together? I still believe in a Nashville for all of us. I still believe in a Nashville together. 
And I still believe that we are stronger, healthier, kinder, safer, more just, and better when we are together. I'm still committed to a Nashville together because it's the only Nashville it's worth fighting for. Thank you, my colleagues, for this discussion, and thank you for listening to me tonight. Respectfully and regretfully, I withdraw this bill. Bill's withdrawn, BL 2017-740. Councilman Anthony Davis, O'Connell, and others amends a metro code establishing a right for pedestrians to use certain streets. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All committees in move approval with a very brief comment. Floor's yours. Just uh, wanted to reiterate as the large point of this bill was uh, to get some awareness uh, for pedestrians. Again, of course, if there's a sidewalk, pedestrian walks on the sidewalk. If there's a shoulder, they walk on the shoulder. Uh, on a lot of these residential streets where we don't have the sidewalks and the shoulders, this is just putting in the code that same as the bicycles, uh, the car yields to the pedestrian, the three feet, very common sense. But just uh, if we can spread the word and uh, hopefully um, create a safer environment as we go forward for pedestrians. Thank you. And thanks to my constituent, uh, Carrie Rogers, who's a big bike pit advocate that brought this to me. Thanks. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. BL 2017-745, Council Lady Allen and Elrod authorizes Family and Children Services Incorporated to install, construct, and maintain an underground encroachment in the right-of-way at 2400 Clifton Avenue. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-746. Council Lady Dowell, Cooper, and others approves an agreement between the Department of Public Works and Century Farms LLC for the design and construction of access roads connecting Cane Ridge Road and Old Franklin Road to the I-24 interchange at Hickory Hollow Parkway. Council Lady Dowell. Thank you. All committee reports are in, so I'll just move it for approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. Councilman Bedding. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi. What am I saying? Hi. <laughs> how, how you doing, sir? Hey, how are you nice doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, su I'm in support of this, but I'm, I'm using this opportunity to ask the mayor's office, um, Public Works, to expand on this infrastructure development and to look towards the west of this development to deal with the fact that many of the streets in my district are under capacity. There are small roads were built for little horse carriages, and now they have a, a traffic of tens of thousands of vehicles every day. And that will only increase when the IKEA uh, building gets uh, situated in that development. So although I am very happy to go to IKEA, I have driven to Canada to buy stuff in Ikea, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I really want to ask the mayor's office to uh, prioritize the connector that goes from Concord Road to, uh, to 24, so the people that are coming from Franklin, from Brentwood, will be able to get to this project without um, overcrowding the streets in my district. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bedden. We're going to let them walk on the new sidewalks we're getting. <laughs> Just kidding. Move for approval. <laughs> This is a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-747. Council Lady Dowell Cooper, Cooper and others. Authorized the acquisition of right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for the purposes of old, old Franklin Road, Preston Road, and Cane Ridge Parkway roadway improvements. Council Lady Dowell. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. All committee reports are in, and I'll move this for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. BL 2017-748, Council Lady Van Rees approves the lease agreement between Metro and Due West Towers LLC for temporary office space at 610 Due West Avenue. Is that East Due West or West Due West? <laughs> Council Lady Van Rees. I, I'd love to answer. It's, it's neither east due west, west due west, or west due west north. It's actually due west. Um, due west, <laughs> I move approval and, uh, and uh, hope to welcome the uh, Davidson County uh, Nashville Sheriff's Office uh, to Madison with this approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 
Bill 2017 749, Councilman O'Connell, L. Rod, and Allen authorizes North Gulch Apartments LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at Joe Johnston Avenue and at 11th Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 750, Sledge, L. Rod, and Allen abandons a portion of Wedge Wedgewood Avenue right of way. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, with all committee reports in, I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 751, Hastings, L. Rod, and Allen abandons Fresno Avenue right of way. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, seeing that all rep uh, committee reports are in, I would like to move for approval. Uh, this motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-752, Syracuse, L. Rod, and Allen abandons a portion of the McGavick Pike right of way. Uh, Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I thought committee parts in. I move approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-753, Councilman Freeman, L. Rod, and Allen abandons a portion of alley number 1897 right of way. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. With everything in, I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-754, Councilman O'Connell, L. Rod, and Allen abandons J.M. Frost Plaza right away. Councilman O'Connell. Sorry, sir. There you go. I think that was my fault. I got a, I thought it was still on when it needed to be on. Um, anyway, thank you, Mr. West Mayor. I would like to move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-755, Councilman Hastings, Elrod, and Allen abandons existing easement rights for property located at 2508 Dickerson Pike. Councilman Hastings. Thanks again, Mr. Vice President. We'd like to move for approval now that all committee reports are in. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, before we adjourn, we do all, I'm surprised that there was not some cake or something on the uh, desk of the council member representing the 20th district, but I believe today is Council Lady Roberts' birthday. Uh, <laughs> so happy birthday, Council Lady. Um, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry. And we also would like to uh, welcome back Council Lady Holly Huezo, who has been, ha has brought the newest member of the council family uh, on board. And um, so welcome back with that. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second, all in favor? You're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.